Okay, I'm going to go ahead and record this. This is not the assigned lab. However, I'm having trouble getting it to work. I'm going to go through and I'm going to have, basically, I'm going to go through the lab that I want you to do and just send a short little, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look here at the, uh, first off, let's look at the uh, lab notes that there. Uh, lab new two cover sheet uh, motor control all right we're not we're going to be basically I'm going to skip the H bridge for now and just simply go through and do a do a short little um, video so kind of skip through you know answer the questions on the stepper motor but uh, we won't be running the stepper motor right there so What's the use of the, um, go through these questions again, and it's imperative that you watch this video because this is the steps out there, and I'll make an announcement that there. What's the use of optical isolator? Don't worry about using the ohm meter out there. But uh, explain the PWM technique, and that there was the disadvantages that there we're not using the HCSC 12 as you well guess and go ahead and answer the questions that there but uh, that there so j just simply answer the questions don't worry about the procedures for this lab that there okay let me close this I'm going to post a, in the announcement I'm going to post a link to this website this is actually much more detailed but I'm stealing the code this is from how to do the PWM on the AT Omega and AT Mega 320? We were using the a different processor. Unfortunately, we're having some trouble with the software. We'll try to get back on there. So instead of doing no lab, I'm just doing a short little demo lab and having you copy it that there. So the code I'm going to use and and kind of read through this so you have an idea. I'm right there, but basically. This here is setting PD6. I'm I'm doing the other one, and this just simply sets the timers. This this here explains, and this course is a little confusing this time. It's in transition. We're using a different processor for the lab as than the textbook. So, without going into much detail, I'm just going to simply give you the code. The code I'm going to be doing is this one right here. This sets up two timers right there, and it's port B1 and 2 are now outputs. We're going to set them up with different duty cycles right there. We use different two different timers to set up the, um, duty, the duty cycle right there. We're setting them to non-inverting mode, and we're using a fast PDM mode right there. This particular processor, let me go ahead and bring up the software. Right there, This is a little, little bit of a problem we've got out there. And this is where things went south real quick with this, these labs. Right there, If you follow the labs out that, that there, and I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and hit new project. One of the problems we've run into here, and I've been placing these in C users, and I just use them my default, and I create create a directory for, and again, I will accept this lab late as I've mentioned earlier, simply because of all the issues going on. And I'm just going to say new projects just to show what the problem is. We select default. And then when we click at there, we pick AVR. But one of the problems we've run into is on the AVR, we're supposed to be using the AT Omega 328, I believe that's the right one. It doesn't matter, these are all grayed out. So I'm picking the 328P 
up there and the win AVR right there next say finish right there and this one does work now I'm going to go ahead it gives us this here now you don't have to I don't know what my screens doing right there now I'm going to just go ahead and use that other one and I'll post in the announcement the link set that there but the outputs are PB1 and PB2 right there we don't need to have a crystal for this particular one because that's built into it right there later on we'll go ahead through and we'll use potentiometers to control it but let's just go ahead and add Actually, I've already done this project. I could probably, right there, if we fit component mode, right there. And we can hit place, component, and from libraries. And I'm just going to put motor right there. And that's a, just a simple DC motor. We're going to put two of them out there. We're going to put one here. Yeah, I'm going to put that on PB1. And I'm going to put another one over here. Right there. And let's just... Bring these down to where they're equal. That's not a very good drawing there, right there. It's hard to draw while I'm in record mode. But I'm going to go ahead and do that there. Let's go ahead and put generator mode. It's not generator mode. Prod mode. Here we go. Let's put a couple grounds in. Actually, it's easier to do it down here. Terminal. Ground. Let's put one on this motor here. Up. Oh. Yeah, let's go ahead and delete this one here. And as I said, this is easier to do. Power, place, terminal, ground. All right, we go ahead and wire these up to PB1. And PB2. Right there. So those are two wi they're wired up right there. Again, this is a relatively quick lab. And then I'm going to go back here to my website. And again, I'll post that into that there. Go back to my website right here. And I'm just going to grab this code right here. This is more than adequate right there. Copy that right there. And I'm just making this a short little demo lab simply because of our mess. We go into our source code. And we paste that. Control V. Right there. So we've got this going. And then at this point we build it. Rebuild project. Now keep in mind that we're going to see the two motors spin. One's going to be roughly three times as fast as the other. So we go over here to our capture and we hit debug and we just run simulation. 
and if all is working you can see that this motor is the one running at 25% duty cycle this one's running at 75% and basically that's all I want you to do just go ahead and turn in the two screenshots and answer the questions right there again this is a simple lab later on we're going to be adding a couple of potentiometers to our two analog to digital converters right there and control our speeds using our analog converters but that's all I want you to do for this lab it's relatively straightforward with that I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording right here right there